Thank you for listening to the Simply Syndicated Federation. For more great shows like these, visit us at simplysyndicated.com. All the answers are going to be either MacGyver or Mr. Keats. My boobies really are not that big. That sounds dirty. Oh, Captain, my Captain. I'm QB Squirt Play out Trust Jason. <laughs> what the hell am I doing in this show? <laughs> wow. Beep, beep, boop, Atomic Trivia War fans. I'm your Positronic Android host, Jason Hawk, bringing you an awesome show tonight from our headquarters in Ohio. Let's meet our contestants. Weighing in at 12,000 pounds, she's the reigning champion of the Filipino Robot Fighting League. Welcome, Rochelle Mantanona. I am the thriller with my mom who is from Manila. <laughs> oh, that's good. Now, he says that he speaks Spanish, but it's all binary to me. Hailing from Costa Rica, let's hear it for Omar Hernandez. One one zero zero one 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 zero. <laughs> and what is that in Spanish? Zero, uno, zero, uno, zero, uno. <laughs> and he is the data to my lore. Let's hear a round of applause for Canada's Kevin Archibald. Woo-hoo. Uh, Jason, this Omar unit has a bad motivator. Can I ask how your winky motivator's doing this week? Whoopsies. You know what? We're uh I'd say we're the the, the status bar says ninety percent. Good. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Lots nice. of people concerned about you, sir. Was there? <laughs> now if you haven't guessed, based on those introductions, what our special topic is tonight, then you might need your logic circuits replaced. We're going to compute a whole bunch of trivia about robots tonight. Maybe you okay. should translate robots for you know, people who don't know what robots are. Because actually when you send the the mail do you, do you spell it like robots or something like that? <laughs> I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is that? I mean, what robots. is that? <laughs> they say it like that on, a t- on a Futurama all the time. But uh, let's get into the robots here. Let's get those brains working. I put one minute on the timer. I need you, dear friends, to loosen up those noggins by working together to name as many sci-fi robots as possible. Oh, crap. And ah. go. Wally sure. Bender. Um... C-3PO. R2. Uh, R2-D2. Um, Old Bob. The Pots. Did we say we said Wally? Uh, Eve uh, from Wally. Um, Good. Vincent from uh, Black Hole. Good job. Mac- That's a nice one. Bishop. Maximilian Isn't Bishop well. a robot? Mm-hmm. Android. Bishop, yes. We'll go Bishop, with it. And we'll get Bishop and Ash and Michael if we're going with the Android franchise. Good. And... Is the way on it? No, oh, he's not a robot. Uh, okay. Did you say Edward Scissorhands is a robot? Ooh, Johnny Five. Good Johnny, Johnny Five. five. Okay. Nice. He's alive. Um, Not sure if you know. One from freaking making Mr. Right or something like that. <laughs> what was that the, one, the one from, from from It Came From Outer Space? Uh, Dot Matrix is from the one from Spaceball. Dot Matrix. Oh, Thank yes. you. Three, two, Shut one, <laughs> and Dewey one. Louis. Good God. You call yourself nerds. <laughs> now, based on the actual names that you gave me, not just saying, oh, that one from, <laughs> you got 14. Not bad at all. It's terrible. That's <laughs> yeah, one of the three seconds. That's good. Uh, yeah, I think we could do better, but we'll go with it. I don't know. <laughs> what's bad what's at that one from Clash of the Titans? Is like Hoot Hoot or so is it Bebo or something? Bebo, Bulbo, Bebo, Bilbo, uh, Bebo. Bilbo. Yeah, the, the owl. Bilbo? Good deal. Uh, so that might get you a little bit loosened up. It might even give you a little bit of insight into some answers that we're going to see once we jump into the hot seat. We have tonight twenty-seven questions to tackle, and they come from contributors Clayton Polizzi. Ryan Valentino, who's a brand new submitter, glad to see him. Great. Michael Mould, Paul Mackey, Timo Rupel, who is our, our good friend. We know Timo. Timo. Yay. Yeah, and Timo's going to be a guest on a future show. <gasps> yes. Oh my God. He Smartest is... guy we know. Yes, yes he's Hands freaking down. awesome. I met him in real life at PAX Prime last year. He is the best. Which is not to say that also uh, contributing tonight, Rick Tatro, that, that he's not smart. It's just, hey, Timo's smarter. Sorry, Admiral. No. <laughs> but uh, also con- contributed questions from Max Weintraub, and I did some questions too. Great. So we've got uh, we've got twenty seven in the bag. We're going to take turns like we do on these special trivia nights. And uh, what order do you guys want to go in? Not first. I think it's Rose's so, turn to go first again. Okay, so we're going to doing RKO. RKO. Like Ro, Kevin Omar. You drew straws. That's the way that you know that it's not stacked. Here we go. Let's jump right in with number one. Okay. All talking about robots. Robots. Ro. What yes. apron wearing robot maid and housekeeper on the Jetsons was voiced by Jane, uh, Jean Vanderpill, who was also Wilma Flintstone. Mm. Huh, we were just 
I was just looking at uh, Geek Nights about the Jetsons. Shoot. Daughter Judy. Who was the Make robot maid on the Jetsons? Rose? Rosie? Like Rose? Rosie, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yay! Nice. Little known fact. Uh, her full name was actually Rosie Palmerbot. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> that can be true. <laughs> Number two so goes to Kevin. Kevin, I Ayo. have a really good hunch that you're going to get this one probably about one word in. Okay. <laughs> Maximilian, Bob, and Vincent are all robots in what 1979 Disney live action film that starred Robert Forster, Anthony Perkins of Psycho fame, and Ernest Borgnine? Have the DVD. I think it's not just Bob. I think it's old Bob. It's uh, The Black Hole. Black Hole is a good one. Uh, one of the movies that almost sunk Disney in the early, uh, well, what was it, late, late 70s? Yeah. I don't think yeah, I it ever was like, saw that. Let, let's try to do Star Wars, but it just didn't have the magic. It was like a bunch of adults making star wars as opposed with, to george lucas which was like a kid imagination with a very odd psychedelic 2001-ish ending <laughs> oh my so giddy end yeah i forgot about the ending yeah so would you say the john carter of mars is um this era's uh, black hole for disney uh no i would say it's more like this era's tron because i think that the critical reviews on john carter were were positive enough i think that time will will you know, have it recoup some of its money at least mm-hmm. in the DVD market. I, I watched and I actually I enjoyed it, except for the girl. I can care less about the girl. I just want to see more of the cool world of Mars, but romance has to be there. And it's based on the book. <laughs> Here's a good question for Omar. Omar, I think you've mentioned this movie before. What actor voiced Gertie, the duplicitous robot who acted opposite Sam Rockwell in 2009's Hugo Award winning? Moon. Uh, I've seen the movie. It's actually a good movie. But I'm I'm so bad with, with names, with like actor names and stuff like that, even, especially with voice actors. Did it begin with a P? Uh, no, it does not. But I can guarantee okay. you 100%. Well, it's, it's, it's a man. I, it was not a female, a female robot. It was a man robot. Exactly, yeah. And it was uh, voiced by a man as well. Go on. Hit, hit me for a hint, Omar. Hit me for a hint. Okay. <laughs> Kaiser Soze! Kaiser Soze! What? Kaiser Soze? Kaiser Soze. That's wicked spoilers, by the way. I know. <laughs> okay, I have no idea what you're talking about. K-Pax. Ah, okay, that's Kevin Spacey. It is. Number four, back to Roe. Okay, what's up? What fictional U.S. military defense contractor created the Skynet system that served as the antagonist of the Terminator franchise? Uh, that'd be Cyberdyne. Wow, Nice! Yeah, I thought you would struggle with that one. Hell no. T2. Cyberdyne Systems. Nice. And you know who worked for Cyberdyne and T2? Rise of the Machines? That'd be Joe Morton. Take that. Oh, what, you mean President Obama? <laughs> <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, Kevin. Hello. What seven-foot-tall MGM prop robot had starred in uh, The Invisible Boy, The Addams Family, Mork and Mindy, the Twilight Zone, Lost in Space, Forbidden Planet, and The Man from Uncle. You're looking for the robot's name? The name of the robot. Oh this, by God. the way, is the most popular question that we received. I think we got it from five different people. I know exactly which one it is. It's the big dome head from Forbidden Planet. I can see it in my head. As to his name, is it just like Roby or something? We'll give it to you. It's Robbie the Robot. Aha! Very, yeah. very famous robot. Probably the most famous robot up until the 80s. Omar. Yes. Your question is uh, Robin Williams. We, I don't think you and I have ever talked about Robin Williams. Do you like him? Nah, he's hit and miss. Uh, that is true, but I do have a warm spot in my hot, heart for Robin Williams. Let's I'm see guessing if he's a bicentennial part. man, right? Five <laughs> of Robin Williams' f- films feature robots. Name three of them. You've already got one with Bicentennial Man. Uh, does toys uh, count? Yes, it sure does. Okay. Because uh, Robin Williams' character's sister. It's a robot, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. I like that movie. Just one more. It's that last one's going to be hard to figure out. There's a really obvious one. Really? Okay, I'm thinking he, that was probably some voice he made. Uh, <sighs> it, had to be, it had to be a voice. A voice in some, some like, animated thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know. Really? Let's, let's recap them. You've got oh, more, toys. Oh, no, Mork and Mindy was just a series. It was not, it's not. Right. Right. Now you've got toys already. You've uh-huh. got Bicentennial Man. Uh-huh. The other live action one is uh, a robot assistant 
to Robin Williams' character in Flubber. Uh, I was going to uh, say Flubber, but I thought it was just the, the jelly things. And then there's two with voices. Interestingly enough, one of them is animated. It was the, uh, not Pixar, I think it was uh, DreamWorks, Robots. Hmm. You know, oh, yeah, that is pretty much blatant. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. And then the other one was AI, Artificial Intelligence, the Spielberg flick. Where it wasn't he wasn't that movie? Yeah, he did the, uh, did a voice in there as well, I think. Hmm. Uh, number seven, up to the top of the batting order, we've got Ro, mm-hmm. Elijah Wood, Tony Hawk, and Biz Marquis joined a yellow guitar playing robot named Plex, voiced by Christian Jacobs of the Aquabats, on a recent episode of what TV show? Aww. There's a reason that Kevin knows this, I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a staple in our house. Yo Gava Gava? You've got it. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell, hell is that? It's a cool see. It's a cool kid show. People think it's 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 kind of funky. Um, someone will say it's like it's like this uh, generation's Barney, where people like, hate it, but see, it's, it's weird. Got a bunch of cool. five year olds in a room and fed them crack, and Yo Gabba Gabba is what came out the other side. Yeah, but it's got like hip hop sensibilities. It's got like indie band sensibilities. It's nothing like Barney. It's got like like really cool stuff. So it's live action. Know. It's like mm-hmm. people in costumes. It is yes. people in costumes, yeah, but they always have like guests on, like, no, that's like never Jack good. Black or that's someone like that. That's never good. <laughs> Number eight, we're up to Kevin, and Kevin, I think you're the best suited to answer this question. We shall see. Lake Vostok, located under more than two miles of Antarctic ice, is a testing ground for submarine robots intended for deployment on which moon of Jupiter? I know this. Wow. Uh, I. Okay. Jupiter, that's the one where they're all like Shakespeare characters, right? I'm going to go with Io. You're so close. Oh. Have you ever read uh, any of the 2001 books? Yes, I have. Oh, these worlds are yours, except something. You should think. Yes, which one? You've got the quote. Attempt no landing there, Kev. Ah. Where can't they land? I can't remember. Is it, is it, is it a, a oh. hairband that maybe made the, the final countdown? <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> it's Europa. Countdown. Nice. That's right. It was Europa. And number nine. This is going to end uh, a little bit of the what we're going to top call the first round. Going to Omar. Yes. John von Neumann. Ah. Do you have any ideas? I thought you were going to say John von Jovi. <laughs> that would be cool. But no, we're doing John von Neumann. Created the idea of self-replicating robots. What name did Eric Drexler later give to nano-sized von Neumann machines in his 1986 book, Engines of Creation? Books? <laughs> really, dude? <laughs> that sucks for you. Well, I, I think to... you will recognize oh. this one. It's, think, of, think about something that our buddy Scott would talk about. I think that Scott has actually talked a little bit about this in the past. Okay, can you repeat the question? John von Neumann created the idea of self-replicating robots. What name did Eric Drexler later give to nano-sized von Neumann machines in his 1986 book, Engines of Creation? And if you want a little bit more background on this question, this is one of those uh, theories that scientists especially and futurists have looked at as far as how the world will end. No, dude, I have no idea. You ever heard the term gray goo? No. Oh, yeah. No, I never heard Basically, the idea is that... uh, Men will make mechanical bacteria that chew everything up and turn it into a, a, a an endless sea of gray goo. So Earth will become an endless sea of gray goo. You got it. Mm. Not a bad way to go. <laughs> uh, I think that's true. But I think that right now, in between questions 9 and 10, we're going to take a brief break to talk a little bit about our sponsor. Pimp it. He's been a guest on this show. His name is Zach Oberath, and he's created a board game. Listen to this. Uh, while you guys listen to the, the commercial that we're going to play, the rest of us are going to go watch Kate Upton. Uh, so here we go. I'm not. Hey there, ATW9K fans. This is Zach from the Artless Podcast, and I have a trivia question for you. In which game is the object to guess in what order your opponent placed four color pegs? And that is Mastermind. Well, speaking of board games, I wanted to talk to all of you about a board game that I have created, and I actually need your help. I made a board game called Legends of Adventure, and it's a cooperative fantasy game where all the players are working together to complete ten adventures along the way, defeating monsters with various cards. 
And what I need from you, ATW9K fans, I need some help getting the funds to get it produced. I'm using Kickstarter.com, and if you're not familiar, it's a great site to raise funds for creative endeavors. So I'd really appreciate it if you could take a look at either our site, which is legendsofadventuregame.com, and learn more about the game itself, or go right to Kickstarter.com and search for Legends of Adventure and see if you can help out. If you decide you'd like to back a project like this, your support will not go unrewarded. We have incentives including t-shirts, signed art by the artist, signed copies of the game, and heck, you can even be part of the game as one of the characters. So, please, take a chance on Legends of Adventure and see where it will take you. Want to help us out financially without spending a dime? Get a free audio book with your trial subscription at audiblepodcast.com slash movies, and we get some cash to help pay for servers and web hosting. Pick any book from the 75,000 titles available at audiblepodcast.com slash movies today. Before we hit question number 10, I'm just curious. Ro, do we have a winner for the most recent Photo Friday? We sure do. For the Sunday Comics Conniption, it is uh, Steve Bartlett. I believe he's from Washington, because I think he's won before. But yeah, good job, Steve. But um, also, to talk about the Kickstarter, I recently backed it for the art, and because I was basically spamming my social networks, I convinced another Kickstarter friend to... He actually backed it, too. Immediately after I backed it and pimped it, I saw it, got an announcement saying, blah, 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 has backed to this game, too. I'm like, ha, huh, that's hilarious. So I'm helping out. And then um, his current Kickstarter project is currently at... Uh, 2,400 out of 7,000. So he's getting there. 26 days to go. So best of luck to Zach. We should totally like hook up some webcam rig so that we can play that game together over the internet, the four of us. That'd be interesting. But be if we fun. play it over the internet, it's a board game. Well, <laughs> we would just have to tell you what to move. Oh, oh so I have to get a fancy camera and stuff. Okay, that's going to take money. So we should make a <laughs> Kickstarter for me to get a camera. You need a $10 <laughs> webcam, bro. I don't need. I, my, she my can't fans, afford that. Yes. She just kicked in all that money to Zach. Dude, I I I am a Kickstarter like junkie um, is the word fanatic. Yes, I am a Kickstarter <laughs> junkie. I've so far well, I'm not as much as others, but um, yeah, I've already pledged towards. Well, I have 17 projects I'm currently backing, and so far, I forget how many have already took my monies. So I think was this COD yeah, that had like 30 something? 35. Damn. So getting back into the trivia here, number 10, we are up to row. Mm-hmm. And What's your score? question is, uh, well, the score's, the score's pretty spread out right now. You're in the lead with three. Kevin mm-hmm. has two and Omar has one. So we're not doing too badly. Not too shabby. But your question, row involves Farrah Fawcett. And I was kind of hoping that it would fall that this went, one went to Omar. Because <laughs> the question yeah. is, Farrah Fawcett's first nude scene is the only remarkable thing about this 1980 science fiction bomb that featured Hector, a giant robot with a murderer's brain. Oh, Farrah Fawcett, she had, like, feathered hair, didn't she? Yeah, she's one of Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Her first nude scene is the only remarkable thing about this 1980 science fiction bomb that featured Hector, a giant robot with a murderer's brain. And I'll be honest... I won't be too broken up if you don't know this one. Yeah, I don't know it. The giant robot with the murderer's brain. The horror <laughs> does, movie. Does this movie come up a lot on Time of Trivia War? No. Actually, oh, okay. I don't think that I've ever heard of this one before now. Okay. But I'm kind of curious to know whether Omar has, because he seems to be our, uh, our our Grand Tetons champion. I have <laughs> no idea what movie that is. Grand Tetons. Me gusta las tetas grande. <laughs> <laughs> the movie in question is Saturn 3. Okay. Man, I thought this would be like a cool reference to like that Melanie Griffith movie, Cherry 2000 or something like that. that would have been nah. Number 11 goes to Kevin. Okay. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of tempted just to sit here and wait for Omar to stop laughing. To <laughs> Dude. You obviously okay. hit something good there. I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Number 11. <laughs> what are the names of the three adorable service robots in 1972's Silent Running? 
who like their namesakes do not wear any pants. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I like Silent Running, and if you like Moon, you should totally see Silent Running. Uh, and the names of the robots were Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Exactly right. Good job. Thank you very much. All right. Number 12 goes to Omar. You, you catch your breath there, big guy? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. All right. If you're a fan of Starbase 66, one of the other shows on the Simply Syndicated Network, you might know the name of this quadrupedal robot designed by Boston Dynamics that can carry more than 300 pounds, even over rough or icy terrain. I think it was something like dog, right? Like, like yes. There's two words. You've got one of them. Uh, it was. It was it like metal dog or something like that. No, nah, it's kind of the wrong direction to be going. Uh, <laughs> hmm. I just remember the dog part. What are those tetas? <laughs> <laughs> Big dog. There you are. <laughs> Big dog is the right answer. Ah, uh, tetas. Nicely dude. done. <laughs> Row number thirteen. Mm-hmm. What is the three-letter name of the 1920 play by Carol Capick, which first coined the term robot? Wow. This was also a very popular question that was submitted to us. Three different people sent us really? this one. Well, they all three are not cool with me, because I sure don't know it. Wait, so three letters play. It came out in 1920, and its name is just three letters. It's an abbreviation. All uh-huh. I need from you are those three letters. Okay. Can I buy a vowel? You can <laughs> you. You? Okay. So you. And it comes in the middle. It, okay, you. <laughs> Mum. M-U-M. I have to know. Uh, it's also hmm. not duh. Yeah. <laughs> and or hello. <laughs> By the way, while Rose thinking, I just want to let you know that I do have a category that I made on my vacation over the weekend. It's called duh and or hello. So be looking forward to that. We're going to do that next week. Oh man, I, yeah, I don't know this one. I have no idea. Does anyone know this one? I remember. I, I know that the dude is is Czech, right? Uh, yes, the dude was Czech. No, it is not HUD. Is it, is it it's bot? R U R, and it stands okay. for Rossum's Universal Robot. I do know that robot stands for work in Czech. In Czech, yeah, right. in one of those dialects. Mm-hmm. Uh, building on that a little bit, uh, we've already had one Jetsons question. Here's another number Uh-oh. fourteen. It's going to oh, Kev. No. Oh, no. Now, I don't really have any real expectation that you're going to know this, but I included the question. It it was submitted to us. I included it because the answer is kind of (laughs) hilarious. What was the name of Rosie the Robot's boyfriend built by Henry Orbit to help Rosie understand love in the 1962 season of the Jetsons? Wow. I knew this was going to be the question. Really? I never watched the Jetsons ever. It was like on very little rotation here and it didn't appeal to me by the time I saw it. So I'm going to hand this one over yeah, to Roe. Please Jetsons tell me if the- his name was Richard. Yeah. <laughs> um, God, it wasn't... Uh, I can't... Wait, I don't... Is it Mac? Uh, good job, Roe. <laughs> yes, it is Mac. Good job. Just thought, it thought it was funny, you know, computer terminology being what it is. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're up to Omar again. Omar, this one is a good one for you. Okay. Because you'll be required to know a little bit of Spanish. Okay. What is the full name of Planet Express's rude bending robot, Bender? I have no idea. I've heard it before, but I have no idea. Dolor? I I don't know. No, this is where you say, Jason, bite my shiny metal ass. (laughs) His full name was Bender Bending. Ah, Bender Bending Rodriguez, (laughs) see? Ah, (laughs) shit. (laughs) I knew it. Number 16, going with Ro again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ro, mm-hmm. have you been watching the Transformers since it came on Netflix? No. Uh, I've been watching Eureka again. Bombshell, Kickback, and Shrapnel were Transformers with the ability to clone themselves, and they made up what subgroup of Decepticons? A subgroup of Decepticons? What are the names again? Bombshell, Kickback, and Shrapnel. Bombshell, Kickback, and Shrapnel. They're the... Um, Wait, that's considered... They had their own little posse going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to make up my own name. I'm trying <laughs> to think of the, the Amobots. I don't know. Wait, I, I know this one. I, it just came to me. Go for it, Kev. I don't. Is it the uh, Insecticons? They are the Insecticons. Nice. Uh, it was Kickback. They were finally Kickback. He was the Grasshopper. Right. You got it. Wow. Nice job. What's Shrapnel? Yeah. What was Shrapnel? Uh, wasn't Shrapnel the Fly? I can't remember. I think Bombshell was like a little beetle. 
why would shrapnel be a fly? How does that relate to a, correlate to a fly? I can understand kickback. I don't remember. Horrible. You suck, Hasbro. That's why you need to make better My Little Pony co- fig- figures. Number 17, seen in The Empire Strikes Back. What was the occupation of the Alliance droid known as 2-1-B? Uh, 2-1-B was the medical droid. Good job. Yeah. He, uh, he nursed Luke back to health. On- Damn it, now he's in lane. Nerd. <laughs> Well done. Yeah, you can't you can't shake me with the Empire trivia. And he had a good little conversation with Luke as well when he was feeling better. So there you go. Uh, I think in the lore, if you look at it, he was actually the, the same medical droid that was brought back to replace Luke's hand after his battle with Darth Vader. Ooh, Sorry, right. scratch that, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> and Ro, he's not in the lead. You're tied uh, for first. Oh, we are. You are. You've each got three. Omar has one still. Well, I'm still the coolest one. So fuck you guys. Uh, number eighteen. What Big Bang Theory character had to go to the emergency room after the robotic arm he built for NASA Howard. got stuck on his penis? Ah, I keep forgetting not to speak over you when you're doing the questions, but it's Howard. Howard Wallowitz, good job. There okay. you are. You're only trailing by one now, Omar. Let's see. Uh, let's see if that stays the same. I have a feeling that Rose is going to know this one right off the off the off the top. Okay. Number nineteen. What was the model number of the Terminator unit played by Robert Patrick in Terminator Two: Judgment Day? That would be the T-1000. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> you don't, Jason. Are you yeah, messing with me? He's messing with you. No. God damn it. No, you're totally wrong. I'm totally the right. T-1000 is Robert Patrick. He's a T-1000. Oh. No. I am right. I know. Cause I, man, I busted that Cyberdyne. Me, me and T-2, we we're like BFF. I used to watch that a lot. Fine. You can have the stinking point. I just wanted to give Omar a fight chance. Because <laughs> I had it right. That's so wrong. No, no, no. That's so totally immersive. Shiny on ass. Yes, you have it right. Yay. Number 20 goes to Kevin. Yes. I thought for a long time that this was a Canadian band, but it's not. Uh, Yoshime Battles the Pink Robots was a 2002 title single released on the 10th studio album by what Oklahoma-based electronic rock band? Oh, oh, who are they? Um... Oh, damn. they also released that Zyrica album, which was like five CDs that you're meant to put on five players in your house and start simultaneously. Ah, and they are... That's oh my good goodness. trivia right there. I know, it's, it was this really cool like experimental thing they released, and it was like a social thing that you had to do. And, oh my goodness, I so know this. They At their concerts, big people and stuffed animals dance around. Is that a herpes oh. reference? <laughs> Possibly. It's a wicked song. No, no, there's a name on the band. Is it like a herpes reference? Could be. Hmm. It's got a black belt in karate. Oh, come on, Kevin. Brain. I think we got another five seconds in it. Uh, don't don't use jelly. Uh, uh, oh, my Drop your lifeline to Omar. Okay, Omar, what is it? I already gave you the, the tip. Think herpes. <laughs> the tip. <laughs> Just just <laughs> uh, she don't use jelly was their first breakout song. It's at- the flaming lips. Flaming lips. Ah, oh. Omar. I could, I could tell you everything about that except their name. This time around, I don't have any Spanish for Omar, but I do have some Japanese. Domo oh. Arigato. Tony Hale, who played Buster on Arrested Development, danced to Styx's Mr. Roboto in a memorable 1999 TV spot. For what car company? Toyota. No! Honda. <laughs> no. Subaru. No. <laughs> Chevy? No. Hyundai? No. <laughs> Ely? No. Porsche? I Not can't make my voice go any lower. <laughs> Rover? It's Volkswagen. The Hitler car. Oh. Oh, Fuck that. Oh. Oh, no. uh, just as a side... I love that you got that question, because your screen name for the longest time has been Mr. Roboto. Mr. Roboto. Number 22 goes to Ro. Mm, What real-life robot is featured in the closing sequence of the modern Battlestar Galactica series finale? Oh oh my god, I was actually thinking about looking that up before we do the trivia today, too, because, like, or, like, mentioning it, because, like, yeah, that robot in... Oh my god. It's the one from Japan, right? Yes. Uh, it's like a little cute little 
bot that like loves people like an emo bot or something. <laughs> Made uh, by I know what, which one is. This has I been on the show one. before. Oh my god, I forgot. Oh, but yeah, it's like white and short and it looks really cute, almost kind of like I Wally in a way. I know that. Oh, I do not this know. Robot because this Wait. is another one that got submitted to us from multiple sources. Okay, Ro, I got a clue for you. What's up? Who's the father of, of this kind of thing? Like robots and all that. Who's the father of robots? I mean, the the literature. Isaac Asimov, right? So? The Asimov bot? <laughs> <laughs> Isaac bot, it's the Isaac or something. Wow. Uh, here's another clue. What was the name of the robot that Cartman dressed up as to fool Butters? <laughs> God, I'm blinking. It's the, it's the something. That has bot. nothing to do with the kid with the name. Oh, God. Now, I can't, now I'm completely blanking. Oh, it's, oh no, it kind of sounds like it. You're right. It's, 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 super, it's like Super Row or something like that. It's like. Cartman dressed up as Osamo. Awesome Osamo. Awesome yeah. Osamo awesome is the answer. Awesome. <laughs> 23, awesome. 23 for Kevin. How many organic Cylon models are there according to the 2004 version of Battlestar? Uh, oh, man. How many were there? It's been so long. Uh, well, we never really figured out whether they were robots. Because if they're organic, I just, I'd never got that. I don't, think, I don't think that they wanted to make it too clear as to what was going on there. Are they, are they robots or not? Okay. Sharon was the six. I remember that. And it was like, Spoilers! Uh, that's you know that from like the season opener. Okay. Like the mini series. Eight. There's definitely an eight. Um. I've never seen it. They call it like the final something. <laughs> so wouldn't you use the six plus the final something? Yeah, there's the final five. That's right. So I'm gonna go with twelve. You're off by one. Isn't it eleven? Uh, six plus five is eleven. It's thirteen. Oh, thirteen. Who's because th- as Kevin mentioned before, yes, they talk all the time about the eight models of humanoid Cylons, and then there's the final five that even the Cylons didn't really know about. So yeah. thirteen got a little more, ropey towards the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, season three on was not not quite as good. Yeah. Omar. Jason. What synthesoid robot? was created by Ultron specifically to kill Hank Pym in the Avengers, but eventually became part of the team. <laughs> what? The Avengers? The, 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 the Marvel one? Yeah. Hey, I know robot. comics are kind of our weak spot among us. Well, Marvel and DC for the most part. Right. Uh, under, underwear pervert comics. They suck, except for Batman. I like them. <laughs> okay, so we're looking for a robot on the Avengers. Is not Iron Man because he's not a robot? Yes, he's a prosthetic. I have no idea, dude. Do you know the Vision? No. Okay, fair enough. But the answer is the Vision, nonetheless. Yeah. Number 25, up to row again. We're into the last cycle. These are going to be the last three questions. It okay. looks for the moment, Ro, uh-huh. like you're going to win. Maybe. Uh, however, it is possible that you'll miss this one and Kevin will catch up. Yeah. So yeah. keep your fingers crossed. Here we go. Thanks for jinxing me. What 1950 sci-fi anthology included characters named Robbie, Speedy, Del Spooner, and Lawrence Robertson? <sighs> Are these books? Might be. <laughs> it's a sci-fi anthology. Okay, yeah. So, 1950s sci-fi anthology. Hmm. Terry Pratchett was not 1950s, so I couldn't well, make up. Well, Discworld is not really. Hmm. Would you like a clue? Yes, please. Would it help you at all if I said... Oh, hell no! <laughs> like Will Smith, oh, hell no? Or... I thought my impression was pretty good. Okay, so it was Will Smith. Oh, Men in Black or something? No. <laughs> no, sorry. We're talking about iRobot. Mm. Ooh. Will Smith played Del Spooner in iRobot. Okay. Okay, so Kevin, you can tie it up here, buddy. That's it. I'm going to force game seven. <laughs> Janu- oh, are you watching the hockey stuff? Uh, no, but everyone in the office is, and I have to feign like I know what they're talking about. Oh. <laughs> There's no Canadian teams left. Uh, just, uh... Just Canadian uh, players. I, if you're talking about Game 7, you're talking about the Caps. Uh, January 25th, 1979, marked the first time a robot killed a human, when a robot arm at what company's Michigan factory fatally struck 25-year-old Robert Williams? Oh, I know that one. I don't know, but Michigan... I'm going to go with General Motors. Oh, sorry, son. Ah. Ford. Ford, yeah, had to be one of the big three. Ford. 
So Omar, going for the consolation here, you do have two points. You can tie Kevin, but Roe has the clear win. <laughs> there were 54 classic robot bosses in NES and SNES Mega Man games. I need you just to name ten of them. <laughs> Let's see. Snake Man, Spark Man, Cut Man, Top Man, uh... <sighs> Let's see. There's Snowman. <laughs> Are you, have uh, you even named any from from Mega Man Two? I don't think he has. That's yeah. like the best one. <laughs> Crash Man. One. There you go. Uh, Minotaur Man. <laughs> uh, Boomer and Quang. Chill Penguin. Uh, Spark Mandrel. That's time. Uh, Pizza Man. What was it? A, a Wood Man as well. I think yes, there was a Wood Man. There was. There was a Fire Man, of course. Shadow Man. Gemini. Uh, Bubble. already said Crash Man. Oh, Bubble Man, you're right. Uh, I think that's it. Drill Man. Was there a Drill Man? Yeah, I remember I him having like drills on his hands. Dust Man, Elect Man, Dust Man. Ah, Trash Man, Flash Man, Yes, Gravity Man. Did I do ten already? Oh, you. Yeah, you've done over ten. Okay. Yeah. Nicely done, sir. So uh, not too bad. I was actually going to just sit back and let's uh, you know see how far how far you could go, but apparently that's not necessary. Uh, good job, Omar, on that one. Final score: Row four, Kev three, Omar three. You know what, guys? That only adds up to ten. That's <laughs> only about a third of the questions that we got. Uh oh, nerd but, credentials in question. But we we answered other people's questions, so you technically did. that's like maybe hey, what what half or something now? Yeah, you had about half. That's yeah. not bad. that's not bad. Uh, but good job. Very, very well done. I think that you might have brought me some trivia, too. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes, I have. Some things that you maybe learned throughout the week, knowing that the robot show was coming up. You did some research, maybe jotted down one piece of trivia that you thought was especially interesting. What did you find? Omar, go first. Okay. Who built the first sex robot? The first <laughs> production sex robot. What was his name and what did it mean? His name? It was a man? It's, it wasn't a it's, female? It's name. It's name. Probably Japanese. Who, was it Hoover? See, you think that, but it was actually a British company. Really? Out of out of all the people in the world, I would have expected this l- the least from the British. <laughs> what do you think? The guy who makes dice and stuff? It was called the 30C, the 36C. Very good. And that stands for her chest measurement. Uh, it had a 16-bit microprocessor that synthesized <laughs> like five words, <laughs> which is just the way you like it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Do you have a review for us? I mean, does it does it hold up? Do you like it? <laughs> it's like giving a review to your pet computer. You know, he's got much more up-to-date models now. Was it everything that it promised on the box? Yes, it was. Mm, okay. Well, I'll go. Speaking of Japan, of the one million Cirrus robots. In use around the world, a quarter of the robots are in Japan. Uh, Japan hopes to actually replace 3.5 million workers with robots by the year 2025. So, yeah, go Japan with the robots. Man, you would have been really great had that been a question, which it almost was. Ah, right. I, I got a uh, I got an email this morning at my office, and I said, oh, my question's going off. We'll replace it with a listener question. So yeah. that's the one that was bumped. Aww. Do you know that... According to the study in 2007, we should be having sex with robots right now. <laughs> what do you think? Right now? Is, isn't, like, is it a fleshlight or robot? This show. I, have uh, no a, I think that's true. As a matter of fact, uh, didn't Obama come out this morning in favor of gay robot sex? <laughs> I'm all for gay robot sex. Definitely. Indeed. I'm well, going to okay, get a wait. constitutional amendment to block that stuff. I should probably go to the definition <laughs> of a robot. <laughs> uh when you said, uh, Jason, when you said, did Dyson make that, did you mean like Dyson the Vacuum Company or Myers Dyson? <laughs> I meant Dyson the Vacuum Company. <laughs> oh, right. Miles Dyson, by the way, still my favorite death scene in any film. Everyone's like, yeah, I don't know much longer. I can hold this. Is yeah. he the guy who invented the Dyson Sphere? Uh, I, I don't, don't know. So. In Star Trek he, The Next Generation. He invented the T. This Dyson guy has a lot to answer for right. between <laughs> vacuums and whatever else. Anyhow. Uh, you gave me a question earlier about Silent Running and Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and I think you were surprised when I knew the answer to that, but I like uh, Silent Running. It's a cool film. The robots, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, look kind of very cool, and you wonder, you know, it was made in 1972. How did they make them walk like that? They look really 
unique, you know, is they have this sort of amazing sort of balance, but you, you're like, there's no way a person could be inside there. Actually, there are people inside there, but they're multiple amputee actors, people who don't have like any legs below their groin area, so they're walking on their hands inside these robots, so it looks pretty That's cool. That's clever. Yeah, it is really clever. If you haven't seen uh, Silent Running, get on that. And that would have been before Star Wars, too, so this is not even like ripping off the whole Kenny Baker thing. No, no indeed. That's pretty neat. If you haven't seen them, basically it looks like walking trash cans. Kind of, sort of. They have better balance, though. They're, they're, they're quite agile. They're bipeds. But, uh, that's some good trivia. Thanks, guys, for bringing it. And that draws this evening's show to a close. I want to thank you guys for being here, as always. Uh, you know, I, I rag on you for not doing very well with the trivia and you know, telling you that you suck and that you need to study more. And <laughs> how I can't believe that you don't get more than 10 questions out of 27 and... You know, how, how it must be symptomatic of, of you guys uh, failing several grades in elementary school and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we don't need to repeat any of that, but um, but you you really are awesome. So thank you for being here. You're always good contestants. And uh, do you have anything that you want to plug before we go? Okay, well, thank you for being Wait! <laughs> Angelina Jolie. Kate. Nice. Oh, God. Good callback. Cat Daddy. Hello. Uh, so we will see everybody next week.